we're seeing a lot of transformation now in what what is online video journalism or what was known as television journalism. Uh, where are things going, in your opinion? Well, I think we're seeing more sources of online video than have ever existed before. Uh, in addition to the most traditional, which is journalism that's made for television and, and then posted online, which still occupies a pretty large percentage of what you see, uh, there are several other streams coming in. Uh, for one thing, there are uh, independent journalists like you uh, who now have the ability, thanks to uh, inexpensive equipment, uh, both for production, editing, camera work, and so on, and also the distribution mechanism of the web, uh, they're able to actually become important journalistic organizations without vast news gathering apparatuses or apparati behind them. So a second stream is independent journalists. Uh, a third is uh, corporations or organizations who are trying to do news-like uh, production. Um, so it's not strictly speaking journalism, but it's an attempt to appeal to news consumers with journalistic messages, although there's actually an agenda. A good example would be uh, the videos that the uh, political candidates uh, or various interest groups are creating, posting on YouTube or on their own sites or on blogs, which really now are competing for share of voice, share of attention uh, of, of the news viewer. And then a fourth is, of course, uh, user-generated content, uh, where uh, amateurs, so to speak, uh, now again, because of the same easy, easily accessible means of production and distribution, can also compete as journalists if they want to. So it's a much more complicated mix for consumers to sort through. Andrew, let me ask you this. What would you say is um, intrinsically valuable informational video? In other words, what elements have to be part of, of a video news piece or report that makes it valuable? Or that makes it, I mean, people will say it's valuable because it's valuable, but tell us, you know, sort of what are sort of the, the, the aesthetics and, 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 and so forth. To some degree, uh, the rules that apply to traditional broadcast journalism would apply here. Uh, the, the values of uh, authenticity, accuracy, clarity, you know, a reasonable degree of uh, production sophistication. I do think that the, uh, the new medium, and especially the smaller screens, whether it's the PC or increasingly a uh, mobile device on which videos are consumed, uh, are more forgiving uh, of, uh, uh, of different kinds of production techniques. Um, I also think that, uh, and I hope, that the kind of um, slickness uh, that grew up over the years in television news will give way to a more natural form of storytelling. I think you're already seeing that happen uh, in generational change. If you look at the people who report for MTV, say, compared to the people who report for a broadcast network, they tend to be less formal. <coughs> Current TV is another great example of that. Uh, the trick will be to retain uh, journalistic uh, standards, um, or at least to be clear about uh, where you're coming from, so to speak. I think the, the concern is that because it's so easy to look like journalism, it might be very hard for news consumers to sort out what's credible from what isn't. I don't necessarily mean that only traditional organizations are credible. I think what's important is for the consumers of news to have the analytical tools of their own to be able to distinguish and to make judgments about what is actually worth believing and taking seriously. The campaign is quite interesting, isn't it? What's happening politically now? What do you think the impact of, um, of, of all this video, either created by the campaigns, by advocacy groups, by others? Tell me what you think, sort of, how that might shape up. The campaign is a good il illustration of how the, uh, the national conversation is becoming more complex and is migrating, sorry for the cliche, to many more platforms. It used to be that the broadcast networks really had campaign coverage pretty much to themselves, uh, in terms of video, certainly. Um, the, now, uh, they have to share that with uh, the campaigns themselves, which have grown extremely sophisticated about uh, creating video uh, for YouTube and other outlets, and also for uh, independent journalists, uh, for bloggers, and even for consumers who want to uh, upload videos that they've created about the campaign. Uh, I think that's all to the good. I think the, you know, our democracy is healthy in direct proportion to the amount of conversation uh, about the issues of the day. Um, clearly, politics is subject to 
manipulation and uh, the pushing of agendas. What's important, I think, is for the people who look at these videos to have the analytic tools to distinguish between messages and propaganda and, uh, and legitimate news reporting. But again, that's not to say that only traditional news people are worthy of reporting on the campaign. I think we have a democratization of journalism. Uh, net, net, that's a good thing, as long as the people who are consuming it understand that uh, there are some sources that are more credible than others. And that's really based on you know, what, why they're reporting, what kind of work they've done, what they're basing their reporting on, what basis they give you to believe what they say, as opposed to merely the fact that they have the wherewithal to make a video about it.